does it. I don't know if you've ever heard your own voice before. No, I kind of heard it right there. It's weird, though. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no problem. They are a time crunch. Cheers. Thanks for making it work. Hey, anytime. It's nothing crazy, but everyone that's done it is like, this is so much fun. I'm like, yeah, let's. If you come in here and you had just like fun for two hours. Why not? No, yeah, I was was talking with Davis. He was like, you got to do it, man. You got it. Just come on in here. And he was just like, yeah, it's just a good time. So. It is. It's nothing crazy. No. Like we're not making a movie or anything. No, you're not grilling me for a job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not gonna do that. You said, yeah. But uh, people that don't know, my buddy Matt Veerling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've known you forever. We went to high school together. I guess I've known you since freshman year of high school. I would say, school. yeah, freshman year. So we were like 14 or 15. Yeah, I remember uh, Genovese's class. Right? Yeah, earth science. Yeah, earth science. <laughs> Learned a lot. Learned a lot. Almost nothing. <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, you went to Indy. Yep, went to Notre Dame, played baseball there, and then got drafted out of there my junior year. Okay. So now I'm doing it. That's the pro baseball thing now. Put that closer. Uh, closer here. Yeah. So. I heard it going in and out. Yeah. Um, something I just want to start off with off the bat is like, so going back to high school, yeah. I remember one day we were going to like Chipotle or something. Like, so like we were like 16 or 17. Yeah. And we were, like, going to go get Chipotle. And, like, we were, like, this is, like, a big group of us. And you are like, no, I got to go through for, like, the Rays or something. And I was like, what the fuck does he mean uh, by that? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know if I remember that one. I don't know if it was, like, the, I don't know if it was but the But there Rays. were a lot of instances where it was, like, I mean, that was a Rays. I mean, yeah, that was kind of big. But there were a couple ones where it was, like, oh, I can't go. I got to do baseball right. stuff. Or what was that maybe. like? I mean, it was. Because like, like, looking back, like, it's, like, a 16, 17-year-old. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it was kind of – it wasn't a lot. Like, I wouldn't do it different or anything. Right. But, but yeah, it was serious then. You know, it was like uh, – Because you didn't know you what got, it was it, at the time. Yeah, I mean, if you have an actual shot at doing right, it, then, right. then, like, you know, you're going all in. So, mm. in high school, it's like – for a lot of guys, it was – especially for me, too. Like, mm-hmm. I started picking up velocity and playing baseball and, right. and everything. So, I kind of just started – but you yeah, were always like serious. With baseball it. was always your thing because you're on the gamers, right? Yep. And that was like the big quote traveling team. Yeah, that was the big traveling team. They were they were good. I would say there were two or three other ones that were pretty good. And so I had buddies spread out all across high school, and we I like to smet, slew, yeah. everything, and we'd always be doing that. Like that was that was Marcos and Plaz. Yep, Marcos Plaz. Um, you remember Ian Nelson? Yeah, I yeah. saw him the other day. Actually, I saw yeah. him at BPV the other day. Yeah, he's really being a poker right now. Yeah, he's, it looks I think like he's, he's doing he's, pretty good. Yeah, I think he's. I mean, just it. based off Instagram, it's actually weird how much I know about the per- poker world just because of how I follow I him on Twitter. And it's yeah. just like, wow, I guess I never would have known these terms. I don't know. He would be. I could see him playing it being a professional poker player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's always good, dude. I yeah, he's him. a great guy. So yeah. you got? Didn't you get drafted going before college? Yeah. But you didn't sign. No, so I didn't sign then. It that was, was 25th? A, that was our senior year, yeah. Really? Yeah. When's the draft? It's It was in June. They just changed it, so it's like now it's in July or something. Okay. But um, That's kind of weird. They tried, to do it, they tried to do it right after the All-Star game, I think. Oh, uh, okay. I, sure. I might be wrong about that, but I think they, they're trying to push it back. Okay. Because it's kind of weird when you get drafted, you end up going in right in the middle of the year. That's what I was saying. And then, was and then thinking, they're like, yeah. okay, then they have these – separate affiliate teams mm-hmm. where you go in. It's like a new season halfway through the year. Right. So it's a little weird, so they just changed it up. But, um, but yeah, draft was in June. And Holy then shit, you graduated high school? Gra- I graduated high school. That was a wild week from what I remember. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we won state, which was awesome. Yeah, that's then, top of the world at the time. Yeah, at the time, it's mm-hmm. like the best thing ever. And then uh, I would say three or four days later, I ended up getting drafted, but I was already going to Notre Dame. By the I'd birds, like, right? Yeah, Cardinals. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so they were like, uh, they were like, we know you're probably not going to sign or whatever, but we just, you know, this is for good report down the end. Hell yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was probably, it was probably with, a super late round. I'm assuming it was like thirtieth round. Yeah, yeah. So it was later, but just I, good it, on at them. the time it was the coolest. Yeah, thing. Was dude, the coolest I could thing. imagine. But then I was like, you know what, I'm going to. Notre Dame, I'm not going to go do that. So that was one thing I wanted to ask about is, so, like, D1 sports in general, 
Mm-hmm. You're just you're starting to get recruited and like talking to people like you're what your sophomore year ish. Yeah. What? Where else did you look, and why Notre Dame? So, I looked at Duke. Okay. They were like the second school, and then the third school was. It was like a mix of Ole Miss and Mizzou. Okay. Kinda your brother's like a Mizzou, isn't he? I, he was a Mizzou. He's at SLU now. Oh, word. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was – those were the top ones. But um, – So, I mean, those yeah. are – when it comes to schools, those are – Those are good ones, yeah. I was looking for, like, a good academic school and, like – Respect. Kind of all that. Just, yeah. I don't know. That's what I was looking at at the time. But um, – Good on you. Yeah, no, I was like, Good you know, you. just baseball. My dad always talking. He's like, if baseball doesn't work out, then you got something on the back end sure. that can help you out. Always graduate. So, yeah, my dad, he got hurt in college. He played football at Arkansas and then transferred to Kansas. Okay. And so he got hurt. And when he got hurt, I think that, like, his advice was like, okay, you could get hurt. Mm-hmm. So if you do get hurt, at least have something on the back end that right have that a plan could, B that could be like really helpful for you for sure so, Notre Dame I mean which Notre Dame would be great my so, lord yeah so that was and then we went to a football game I remember visiting Notre Dame for a football game and that was like that was, that was pretty much what did it yeah mm-hmm. I mean the people were so nice the campus is beautiful campus is beautiful I you're, was, hey you're a Notre Dame fan huh yeah kind of I'm kinda. my family's from Indiana but I was like we always did a bunch of lacrosse uh, camps at Notre Dame yeah and the first lacrosse team's good up there. yeah yeah I was never going there for <laughs> lacrosse like I would know but yeah the lacrosse team's dope mm-hmm. and like the first time that we went on that uh that camp trip I was like dude I don't blame anyone for wanting to go here this school's sick yeah it was yeah. incredible yeah everything was great um and how it was, was it, it was like, funny yeah I, sorry go ahead well, I was just going to say, like, when you go and visit there, yeah, it's, like, the best thing ever. You really? Know? It's, like, game day. Right. So, but then you get into it, and I remember getting into it, and I'm like, dang, school's hard. <laughs> yeah. Weath- weather's freezing cold. It's cold as shit up it there. It's freaking unbelievably cold. That's, like, northern, northern Indiana. Yeah, you don't realize it, and then you're super close to the lake. So, mm. it's just, like, comes off. The wind is miserable. It goes right through you. It goes right through you. Yeah. How was that's I want. How was it academically? It was tough. Um, I mean, there were, I don't know. I would say some guys on our team that really excelled. They were mm-hmm. just naturally smart. Just was naturally kids. so smart. But yeah. that really, I mean, I was smart, but I wasn't any like a whiz kid. You got anything. in. So that's but th- that was the biggest thing. Yeah, right. definitely baseball helped. But man, it was it was difficult. There were certain times where I was like. I was always like halfway through the semester. I'm like, man, this, this, I'm like, here. this class here is kind of tough. This class is kind of tough. I remember one time I was in managerial economics, and I think I had failed the first two exams or something. <laughs> and it was been there. Oh, it was terrible. And I studied for them too. I'm just not mm. good at econ. Yeah. So then I'm, you know, the guy calls me in, and I don't have a good grade in the class, and he's like, you know, you might fail this class if you don't. You know, pick it up. Pick it up. He's like, there were two weeks left in the in the in the semester, and so he was like, "You got to meet with me every day for the next six days." Mm-hmm. And so <sighs> I, went, I had to go into those office hours like six days in a row, work hard. So there were certain times yeah. I end up I end up getting through it, but there were certain times where it was like teetering on on thin ice with it. So was there? I guess if you like, if you could speak for like. At the D1 level in general, is I'm assuming there's like a pretty good support system when it comes to academics. Yeah, there is. There is. Like you can get tutors whenever you need. Right. It's um, there if you need it. Yeah. Tutors. You have an academic advisor. What'd you major in? Management consulting. Okay. What does that mean? So consulting's like pretty much solving business problems. Yeah. So it's pretty advice wide, on whatever. It, yeah. Wide range of. I mean, that's like what half our accountant friends are. They're quote consultants. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. It's. I would say it's on the easier level of majors there in the business finance, school. Finance, baby. Dude, finance. Just coasted through. Yeah, you got to be smart. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, CBC taught you well. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, sure. it, but it was, uh, yeah, man, it, it was definitely, like, consulting's a great major. It was a little bit easier than, like, finance and accounting, but it was still pretty difficult. A lot of, a lot of presentations and everything. Did you graduate from Notre Dame? Did you get your degree? Yeah. So I left after my junior year, but I was Yeah, you got drafted like halfway through, right? Yeah, and it, it does suck for guys when they get drafted out of their college or whatever, their junior year, you gotta go back. Mm-hmm. And, and I get, can't imagine going so back. So that's kind to of school. a it's kind of a bitch to do it. So it's like I don't know. 
we got to find time in the fall to go back. And so I went back 2019 fall semester. Luckily, there were like seven of my best friends went back because we all played baseball. And That's huge. We're lucky enough to go play professional. And mm-hmm. We all went back at the same time, so it was a blast. But then I had one more semester left. COVID happened. And luckily, got to take a class online, and then they shortened the semester, so I went up there and finished then. That probably, quote, saved your ass. It did. It really did. Yeah. Because just, like, the time constraint in general and being up there, that probably just, like, a huge stress reliever. It is. It's Obviously, COVID is awful, but I can only imagine, like, for you, I bet that was... Ooh, I mean, think about a regular year. Right. You know? Like, let's say... Like, you, literally your last semester trying to graduate with all yeah, the shit you're you, about to you have think you want, Like, you don't want to be there. No. And you don't, no. Know, you don't know any of the guys really on the team, maybe right. a couple. And then on top of that, friends there and everything. You don't mm. know a ton of people, so it's kind of like... It does... It's it's difficult. And you yeah. got you got bigger things going on at the time. And, like, and then at that time, you're like, man, I, I'd rather be in St. Louis yeah, training, hanging right. out with everybody and doing everything. So, yeah, no. But I, I every time I went up there, I had some buddies. It was nice and... Got it, got it over with. Have God. you been back since? Like a football game or anything? Baseball so, game? actually, la- I didn't go back this past fall. Just mm-hmm. like things didn't line up. Right. But, um, yeah, the last time I was there was 2020 in the fall. Mm. Yeah. You want to get back up there? Oh, yeah, I got to get back up there. Shit. I'd love to go. I've never been up there for a football game. I haven't been to many college football really? games. Yeah. I Like, outside of Mizzou, I've maybe been to, like, four fo- college football games. Yeah. Literally, like, I went, probably went to one or two, like, under the age of, like, 12. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, Notre Dame, like, when like when we went up for those camps, seeing that stadium, I was like, I got to get up here It's sometime. an experience. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they uh, they updated the stadium. It looks great, everything. But, uh, yeah, game day there is different than – I don't know why. It's just, like, a different vibe. It's probably, like, the cold and everything is coming together. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, man, I don't, it, it's just so weird, like, tailgates and everything like that. You go to different t- like tailgates at Mizzou right. or tailgates anywhere else. See how different it, it is. Just kinda, it's just kind of, it's kind of got its own little like niche a little bit. Sure, I yeah. loved it though. Oh, it was great. Yeah. So, so you got drafted, and then so walk me through that. Like you get drafted, and then like what does your next week look like? Like you, so your yeah. junior year ended. Yeah. After the season, the draft happens. You get drafted. It's the middle of the MLB season. Yeah. So what? How does that work? Because that, like, we were just talking about, that's so. It's it's a little weird. But, yeah. Um, I mean, you're not getting drafted and going right to the MLB. Right. Though. That's like I think that's happened only a couple of guys. But maybe like top five picks. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Or I think there was some kid with the White Sox that pitched in the College World Series and then and then went up there with them and pitched. But that was like super rare. Right. But uh, but yeah. So I get drafted. Um, our college season's done. So then I get drafted, and after that, I go to Clearwater, Florida. I fly down like two days later, I would say, after yeah. I gotten drafted. And they're like, pack your stuff up. You're, you know, you're going to, this is, bring your stuff for like the whole summer, rest of what? summer. So you're gone for June, July, August, September. You're probably going to be gone. So bring all your stuff, whatever wow. you're doing. So I fly down. So you got drafted by the Phillies. Yeah. And their spring training's down there. Yeah. So is that why you went down there? Yes. Okay. Actually, so what I did was they drafted me. I flew to Philly. Okay. And so I flew to Philly. I went to a game there. Mm-hmm. And there was about 10 or 11 draft picks there from that year. Right. And so we got our physicals done there. Okay. Checked out. Everything's good. Fly you down to Clearwater. You sign your contract. After you sign your contract, um, then you're, like, ready to play. So just like that, just like that. So I get wow. down there and usually what they have going on at the spring training facilities is um, GCL. It's, it's pretty much like extended spring training. Mm-hmm. And, and then there's a GCL season, which is rookie ball. Okay. And so it's a bunch of young Latin kids. Most organizations, it's just a bu- bunch of young Latin kids. Really? So I walk Cuba, in. Cuba, Dominican, that yeah, kind of stuff. Some Cubans, a lot of Dominicans. Yeah. This is just a Philly. A lot of Dominicans were there, a lot of Venezuelans. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, and so, yeah, I walked in there, and um, after I had flown down there from Clearwater, walked in there with, like, ten of us, and culture shock. There had to have been 80 Latin dudes. Oh, no. Blaring music, just eating lunch, getting ready. And we're like, what You is newbies it? walk in. Yeah, and they're like, oh, oh these are the draft pick guys. What's well, up, no, freshman? Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what it felt like. And I'm like, I'm 21 years old. Mm-hmm. I'm walking to this. this. is so weird. But, um, 
Yeah, so then pretty much met all, like, the coordinators, which yeah. is, like, outfield, infield, right. hitting, all the bosses, and met all them, trained there for a week, and then I got shipped off to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, probably a week later after I had gotten down there. And and is that uh, double? Is that single A? Double that was a? short season. Okay. So if you think about it, it was it'd be like A minus. Okay. Ball, and then there's A ball, A plus, double A, triple A, big leagues. Wow. So that was like A minus. So you short spent, season, right? Yeah, and so I would go up there. I mean, quote rookie ball. You just got it. Yeah, it's like something. a step above rookie ball. Right. So yeah, that's what I feel like most people don't understand. Like even talking with my aunts and uncles when I got drafted, they they were like, oh, so like. Always drafted by the Phillies and all this stuff, and I think they thought I was going to play Just straight there. Yeah, or like something like that. And I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, no! I always knew there was double, triple, and single, and I've heard yeah. like guys. But there's even stuff lower. Down. Yeah, there's those lower levels. So that's so, wild. Yeah. So how a minus ball? It's been a fall there, and then you go yeah. to single A. Yeah. Well, so I spent two weeks in Williamsport, okay. Pennsylvania, and I hit really good there. Played pretty, pretty, played pretty well, and then someone got hurt. In, in regular A, in single A. Right. And so pretty much low A. So then they uh, they sent me up there after like two weeks, which is in Lakewood, New Jersey. Yeah. And that, so What team was that? Lakewood Blue Claws, which is low A. So in general, like how you were just saying, like there's only been like a few kids that go straight to the team. Yeah. Is like that rookie <clears throat> ball season, like the GLC – is that like a gauging? Or GCL. 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 Yeah. Is that just like a is that like a gauging time of like if they'll put you straight to like triple A, if they'll put you like as like a backup on the big team? Or like how does No, so that does everyone work up rookie single double triple? Yeah. So guys have like a every everybody's different, but majority of the way it goes is you would start like in the that rookie ball G C L right area. Uh-huh. And then you would move step by step up. So it'd be very, very rare for a guy to be in rookie ball or GCL and then just shoot up to double A. Who's someone that's done that? Or who's someone, like you were talking to that White Sox kid. Yeah. Like, who I think are these people? A, uh, they're like very specific guys. So like that kid from the White Sox. For very specific reasons. He's a left-handed something. pitcher. He right. throws okay. like 100 miles an hour. So that plays right. no matter what. Right. So he's in, he went to Tennessee. Okay. Did well. I think he was a first round hundred. Yeah, I think he was first round pick. So then they were just they've done that. I think there was another guy, um, Brandon Finnegan, who pitched in the College World Series at TCU. Mm-hmm. Then like two or three weeks later, was in the big leagues Shh. after he got drafted. So that like never happens. That's crazy. That never happens. But it, it always seems to be like a left handed specialist. I mean, I'm just I so. I can only speak for football, but like I'm just imagining like getting drafted in the NFL. Yeah. Like obviously, I've not, I've never played at that level. But like getting drafted in the NFL and literally within weeks playing for them—that's insane. It could be, it might be overwhelming. Yeah, yeah I which imagine. I guess is nice about. Um, it's like a warm up. Well, literally, it is. Yeah, a warm-up. it's like okay, you got to prove yourself and you right. go up. So it is. Yeah, and then when you get up there, you're like, I'm ready most of the time. So, so. then, double A and triple A is that a regular baseball season? None of that short yeah, season. Yeah. So stuff? so short season is the only season that's in the GCL that's shortened. Okay. But once you get to low A, high A, double A, triple A, you start – those seasons start in April, mm-hmm. and they end in September. Normal season. Normal season. So you got brought up – you played your first game last summer, like June yeah. or July last summer, something like that? June, yeah. Yeah. Why did they bring you up? So – I know you were I know you were playing well. Go yeah. look up his stats if you yeah. want to. You were playing really <laughs> well. But like, was it because you were playing really well? Did someone get hurt? What, what was going someone on? Someone got hurt. Okay. Matt Joyce got hurt. He okay. got put on the IL. He was an uh, outfielder. It was his back, I think. But Were you playing, like, a utility kind of a thing? Like, if they needed you, you'd go play it? Or were you trying to specialize in outfield? So I've always played outfield. Right. Yeah. yeah. I and remember so, that. <clears throat> yeah, but then as, uh, like – I started playing first base and infield mm-hmm. in Triple A. Okay. Uh, after that, but but yeah, I mean, so I feel like you just want you just want to get playing time. It didn't matter how. Right. Yeah, I just was trying to play no matter what. Right. So he got hurt. Matt Joyce got hurt. He gets hurt, and then I get called up because of him, and I'd only been in Triple A for three days, <sighs> so it was kind of like a shock. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How'd weird. you deal with that? I didn't see it coming. I mean, dude, three yeah. days? That's yeah. crazy. I had like 12 at-bats for the AAA team, which in itself, I was like, that's kind of a, you know, 
you're going to AAA. You're, so you're kind of in awe of that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, three days later, I get a call going out to the bus. That's crazy. And yeah, and they're like, you're going to the big leagues. Take an Uber to the Boston airport. You're flying to San Francisco. That's where the first game was. And that's where the first game was. So I never still got to say congratulations, man. Thanks, man. Congratulations. Appreciate I'm it. so yeah. proud Long of you. Long time coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm so happy for you. It's Thanks, unbelievable. Man. Yeah, crazy. And you got to hit that game. Did get a hit, pinch hit, and uh, I was swinging. I'm like, <laughs> you have to. I'm getting, my, I'm getting a hack off here. Absolutely, dude. And uh, I fouled the first. I'm getting a hack off. It was actually, I know. Can you imagine being up there? You're like, no. For the, yeah. I can't not. imagine. <laughs> I, I want to know. I can't keep going. It's, uh, man, I'll tell you what. It was like, get up there. I was actually lucky, I thought, because the guy before me hit a home run. Mm. So I feel like all the attention in the Some stadium. Some pressure's off. Yeah, all the attention in the stadium's on that guy. Of course. And so Ronald Torres, he hit a home run. Everybody, all the attention's on him. And then I get up there. I feel like I'm the only person, like my team's the only, are the only people in the whole stadium, other than my mm-hmm. parents, that know that it's my first at bat ever. Mm-hmm. And so first pitch uh, was a ball. Second pitch, I so took. So crazy. Yeah, I almost. Like this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Second pitch, I almost threw my back out because I took, like, the biggest swing of my life. <laughs> Swinging for the fences. Yeah, and uh, fouled that off, and I heard our whole dugout just go nuts. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, first contact, dude, first game. Well, it's just like the, the swing. They're like, oh, my gosh. And then. He was uh, going for it. Yeah, then I took the next pitch, um, and then I got a hit to right field. So, yeah, it was. It was nice to get it out of the way. I bet. Yeah. So Davis, shout out Dave. Yeah. He kind of put this all together. Yes, I mean, did. I obviously wanted to have you on no matter what. Uh-huh. But one of the questions that he wanted me to ask and dive into is like, so like, obviously it's crazy that you're playing in the big leagues. And like everyone can imagine how nuts that is. But like what you were just saying, like when you're walking up to bat and like when you're you're swinging for the fences, like yeah. what's going through your head? I mean – like, when you're in on deck head. taking your practice swings, what are you thinking about? I'm just trying to play it cool, honestly. Right? Yeah. Just play some ball? I'm just Well, I'm just trying to act like I belong there. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying shit to, your pants on the spot. You know, well, low-key, I'm <laughs> feeling like I'm about to. But, yeah, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man, just act like you've been here before. Right. And yeah. then it was funny. I was, I was, like, taking practice swings on the on-deck circle. And I look back, my dad's behind the dugout just smiling at me. I just bet. like, what? he's so happy. And so, but yeah, not a ton was going through my head, but I'll tell you, like, just trying to play it cool, that was mm. probably the biggest thing. That I, calmed I, you down? A uh, little bit, a little bit. <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah. I, it's hard to be calm in that uh, moment. I know, like, yeah. It's hard to be calm in that moment. It's, it's, you think you've been working so hard to get there, you finally get there. Mm-hmm. And, there you are, do it. It's so so crazy, there's a lot of man. a lot of things. So I mean, it's probably just a roller coaster of emotions. Oh yeah, I, I mean, yeah. that's probably just up. And like your first swing, like your first ball, you're like, oh, if he's gonna yeah. walk me, I mean, oh, you can swing. Exactly. How do you even focus on like baseball at mm-hmm. that point? Like I'm here, you know. So when, well, when you're like, same you know. kind of thing, when you're like sitting in the dugout and like so outfield, but you're like you just want playing time. Yeah. How are you getting yourself ready for any of that? Like how yeah. like. Because you don't know what's going to happen on any given oh, like, play. Oh, so if I'm, like, uh, in the outfield and they're – Yeah. Yeah, like, what am I thinking? Right. Um, or if they were to pull you down a shortstop or first base, whatever. So baseball is a little different than other sports, I feel like. I feel like in baseball you can kind of anticipate things mm-hmm. better. Sure. Whereas in, like, football or lacrosse or baseball, it's, like, um, constant action. Like Soccer it's on the hockey. Yeah, yeah just there, on the spot, there, right. on the spot. Whereas baseball – you know, you're standing there for 10 seconds before a pitch being delivered. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if I'm in the outfield, I'm thinking, run around first and second. You know, this is what I, this is where I have to throw the ball if the ball's hit here. Mm-hmm. Or ball's hit this way or this way. This is what I'm doing with it. Fly ball over here. This is what I'm doing with it. And, yeah, it's kind of like anticipating what you're going to do. So then when it actually does happen, you've already kind of gone through that situation in your head. So, you yeah. And being in the big leagues, too, getting up there, I – I mean, it, that helped to really think that way mm-hmm. because, yeah. because there's a lot of distractions going on. So I can only it, imagine. Yeah. You have, you only, you have to think that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're you like caught, hyping you yourself. You get caught sleeping. Right. 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 Whatever. Yeah. Um, how what was I going to ask? Um, shit. I don't know. Forget it. But yeah, I'll come <laughs> back to it. But um, what like, 
Going from single A, double A, triple A, big leagues, what do you think was the most frustrating frustrating part or process about it? Um, like just in general. Yeah. I had a uh, – I mean, you're, you're going to go through struggles with, with that mm, type of stuff. Right. Um, in 2019, I didn't have a very good year. And that was just because, like, my swing wasn't as good as I wanted it to be and um, – or I thought it was good, and it kind of didn't really play that well. Yeah. And then just certain things didn't go my way. So I guess one of the hardest things is kind of dealing with the downs. Yeah. And like, you know, putting, no, putting absolutely. In, and then, so let's say you're in, you know, high A, and you don't have a great year, and you're like, man, it's going to be a long road to get to the big leagues. And you just got to kind of managing your emotions, managing mm-hmm. your head, that you can kind of, like, deal with the downs. Because you said, I mean, you – I don't want to use the word lucky, but, like, you spent three days at AAA. And I, yeah. Am I wrong for thinking that I feel like a lot or most situations you could spend a year in each one? Oh, yeah. That's usually how it goes. Really? So for a lot of, like, a lot of guys, it's, okay, I spent a year here, a year here, a year here. So Especially like guys that go in there when they're in high school. Mm-hmm. They really take it slow. Right. But when you come out of college, you're a little bit older, a little bit more refined with things. Because 90% kind of, of it's probably up. just development and literally getting up to that big league speed. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want to throw a guy up there that's not ready. Right. And then, then they, you know, their confidence is shot. Then everyone's going to look bad. Yeah, then it's not good for anybody. So, yeah, it definitely takes time. But I don't know. I guess they thought I was ready and threw me up there. What was the most fun part? I mean, I can speak for everyone. You're living the dream, like, what, <laughs> yeah. like playing your favorite sport. But like, what's, what was the I most would say fun part? the most fun part, I mean, obviously having success up there and yeah, sure. winning games with the guys sure. was the best part. Dude, I, I did. I saw a picture after. Like the adrenaline from that. Was like, I think it was amazing. when you figure for, when you hit your first home run and the Phillies yeah. tweeted a picture of you and Bryce Harper, dude. I literally dropped my phone. I want to start crying. I was like, there's just <laughs> no way he's doing this right yeah. now. That's yeah. crazy. I know. And so, I know. like, what? how does that all make you feel? Like, that's so many emotions. Yeah. I mean, it's what you work your whole life towards and you're – you're finally there. Right, because I feel like some people are like, like, oh, like, he just got to the big leagues. And, like, in your mind, it's like, no, I've been doing this for 22 years. Yeah, I've been – everything I do, like, right. in the off season or whatever, mm-hmm. every, what I eat, mm-hmm. everything is just kind of towards that. Um, but that was definitely yeah, – How cool was that? That was one of the coolest moments. That, what game What game number was that for you? I'm not, maybe in the 20s. Really? I don't exactly remember the game date, but I remember it was against the Pirates. And then. Where was it? Was it in Pittsburgh? In, in, it was in Philly. Oh, that's awesome. Home crowd? Hell Home yeah. Home crowd is sweet. And they, uh, yeah, so a pitcher, Kyle Gibson, he's from St. Louis, or he's from the St. Louis area. Okay. Um, or he lives around here right now. He, um, yeah. So he, he went to Mizzou, first round pick out of Mizzou. Six he's six, a, he's a big ass. Yeah, dude. he's a big guy. He um he had a home run before me, mm-hmm. and it's his first home run of his career. That's really he's, been, he's been in the league for like ten years. But he's a pitcher. He's a pitcher, and so that usually doesn't happen. Right. So, so I was catching some some crap from everybody. He was like giving me some shit, like oh, <laughs> he's like I get a home run before you, <laughs> and I had been up there like twenty something games, and so then the next day, literally next day, I hit one. Really, it was, it was funny. That's yeah. awesome. But he uh he's giving me some. Some crap about it, but that was a cool, cool moment, man. Did you keep the ball? Did you get yeah, the ball I back? got it. That's yeah. awesome. When I got back into the clubhouse, it was like already cased up. No way. And like authenticated. It was. That's, it was cool. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah. So, um. How? Yeah. Oh man, I keep forget these questions. <laughs> um, the home run. Oh, I don't know. Just like like when you hit it, you know. I had I didn't know it was be a home run, but I had night. I was like I had that, that pretty far. good, <laughs> that pretty good. Yeah, that's dude. This is I, this is so funny to me to hear because like I I literally stopped playing baseball in middle school because <laughs> I couldn't hit the ball worth the shit. Yeah. Like everyone, like I stopped playing at the age where like people would cry if they struck out, and like I was just so used to it. Yeah, I was like whatever. Uh huh. Because it was exactly that. I was like I'm gonna swing the bat all four times. Uh huh. And if I miss, okay, I'm swinging. Yeah. 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 If yeah. I hit the ball, I knew it was gonna be a nuke. Uh huh. But. Power, know. yeah. That's just me. <laughs> That's so. Yeah. Um, what a. Uh, um, we'll get to that. But something, the thing that I saw the other day, what are your thoughts on Barry Bonds? Yeah, so I. That. I I mean, yeah, he cheated and everything. Right. But I think 
he should be in there. I think he should. I think he was. Like Who's a, the other guy? Um, Clemens and someone. Roger else? Clemens. I think it depends on the case. So sure. For some guys, I think, you know, you took steroids. It like greatly impacted your career. Mm-hmm. I do think steroids like greatly impacted all those guys. Sure. But Barry Bonds was a Hall of Fame player before. That's too. That's what everything that I've yeah. seen. Like even I saw some stat the other day. It was like even if you took out some. It was like even I think it, I think if you took out his steroid years, he still would have numbers that would put him, like, damn near the Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah. I, think, I mean, he was always a beast. It was just literally, yeah. like, the latter end He's of his a, career. Yeah, great player. That just, like, helped him perform amazingly towards the end Hit of his career. 760 yeah, least, pounds. Yeah, all-time leader in home runs. So, But even when I train, like, my training mm-hmm. and stuff, like his swing is might be the best ever. Really? Yeah. Like, and I think steroids might have helped it a little sure, bit. Sure, speed, but, whatever. Yeah, just, like. The way you got to swing, it helped him. But, yeah, he definitely, like, he's might be, like, top two swings all time. That's wild. Like, like you swing like him, you, you're going to be pretty good. Dude, I, I it was something that I saw the other day. It was, like, if you took out, like, all his strikeouts, or like, all the times that he was walked or something, mm-hmm. I don't know what the, how, how the stats would make sense. But it was, like, if you took out something, his, like, swinging percentage was still, like, three, like .33. Yeah. And I was, like, that's insane. Yeah, he's, no, he's... He's a le- he, so you think uh, case I think, by case? I think yeah, case by case. But I think he should be in there. I mean, but he's I, not going to be. I mean, maybe he he will be later on. With how the games change, is anyone going to hit seven hundred sixty home runs again? What is it? Maybe, maybe. I think it's like seven fifty six, maybe. Something like that. Because he broke Hank Aaron's, right? Yes. Yeah, he did. I think he will. Um, I think someone will do 762. it. 762. 762, yeah. Yep, Hank Aaron, 755. There you go. Yeah. A-Rod, 696. I didn't know that. Yeah. You think anyone will get that close? I, I mean, think he played 22 I think someone years. Will. I think someone will get there. That's wild. But, I mean, the game's, the game's going towards home runs. People want to see home runs. Like, I mean, that's just the rules of the NFL. People want to see high-scoring games and passing the ball Yeah, a lot. the game. That's Same just time. how it is now. Oh. Yeah. So, do you're a... Uh, we ran into each other at the gym the other day, and yeah. you were talking about um, just, like, the workouts you were doing, and you gave yeah. out a shout-out to them, like, how, like, the program that he was putting you on and stuff. Yeah, they're good. What, yeah. like, how, just from, like, working out and, like, your off-season, like, what, like, what is your off-season program? Are you working out seven days a week? So, not seven, but... Um, and is it is it lifting? Is it's, it- it's lifting, yeah. So, I'm, like, I would say Monday, I go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'll lift, and then I'll do one... One day I'll do running. Mm-hmm. And Some that, sort of cardio. Yeah, yeah, or like agility or something. Right. And then um, hitting, I'll hit five times a week. So, Or I would say four to five. Four That's to five. Crazy. Just like at a batting cage or something? Yeah, to, with my hitting coach. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then throwing, I'll, I mean, that takes – it doesn't take long to do that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's Monday through Friday, and then I'll go into the gym on Saturday. So, so like, with the question I asked you before we started, is there any, like, in, in, like, a similar fashion, are there any, like, workouts that baseball players just don't do? Because, um, like, uh, like, a lot of, like, heavy lifting is, like, Yeah, that, on the, the one thing would stuff. be, like, shoulders and, like, right. especially pitchers, they try to stay away from, mm-hmm. uh, like, that you don't want to hurt yourself yeah. lifting. So they'll stay away from bench pressing sometimes. Like, when I was in college, I didn't bench press at all. I don't like bench I, pressing. Because mm-hmm. I, used, I used to uh, – I used to pitch. I love bench press personally. Mm-hmm. I've been doing that a ton, but I need it though. Right, is size. I need, yeah, I need some size. I, I like don't, dumbbell bench. I don't like. I don't like barbell bench. Dumbbell is good too. Yeah, mm. yeah. Did but you, have you just done barbell bench your whole life because of football? Football. Well, after I stopped playing football, it's almost been exclusively dumbbell. Yeah, and like if I feel like it, I'll do barbell. But it's almost. I feel like just my the range of motion is just so much better with dumbbells. Have they? Did they have you doing that at CBC? What, barbell yeah. or dumbbell? Barbell. It was, like, almost all barbell. Yeah. And it was because it was just, like, you know, the max. What's what's your bench max? Right. And you're not going to get that with dumbbells, so. No, that's right, yeah. But every sport's different. What is, like, so, shout out Lift STL. What was, what do you think with the program? What about the program? So. I think you helped you. Because you were talking about, you were just talking about your shoulders when we were talking. Yeah. And, like, how something that you were doing helped them a ton. Yeah, it was, I mean, bench pressing was good. They had me doing, like, single arm presses. Shit you had not done yet. Stuff I just hadn't done because mm-hmm. I used to pitch, so they were like, 
we want to stay away from that. Right. But yeah, they've been great. I mean, Eric Humes, he's he's the guy there. I love that gym. He's. I haven't he, met Eric yeah. yet, but I know who he is. But that's a, it's an awesome gym. It's a great gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I've been talking to him. He wants to get like a bigger place and like really? eventually, eventually down the road. Yeah. But uh, I could imagine. Yeah, like, can you imagine that place being bigger? I mean, that would be that'd be up there with some of the gyms here. It would be. It'd be a good spot, yeah. I mean, they're already – It's. I feel like they're just not up there with the gyms around here because of the size of it. That's. I think that's too. But, yeah. I like, literally just, like, the equipment they have in there and, like – It's great. It's all, like, A-plus, top-of-the-line stuff. Mm-hmm. It looks good. He knows what he's talking – like, writing my program. Mm-hmm. Like, for anybody that wants to go there, mm-hmm. he writes a great program. Any of the trainers really do in there. So, he's helped me a ton. How you? Was he a baseball guy? He was. He used to play. I think he played college baseball. But he's worked with certain guys. So one guy um, who got me going there was Jake Brents. I talked with him during COVID. A mm-hmm. uh, bunch of baseball guys got together and were doing at bats and everything. But I got together with him and uh, was like, "Hey, man, like where we're even working out at?" And he told me about this place. So I went in there, and that's how I got hooked up with him. And uh, yeah, that's that was like 2020 COVID. So Dude, I heard that they opened that gym like I joined last year and yeah. they apparently they opened like literally like a month or two before COVID hit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even it might have even been it, it, it might like have been a couple like, weeks. Yeah, like March of nineteen, <laughs> yeah. something like that. That's tough. But, but I hope they, they made it through. Well. Yeah. I mean they're still I think they're doing good. I think so too. Yeah. That's what I love about it though, is like I want to shout the place out. Like I don't want more people to join. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about it, because no uh, one's ever there. Yeah, you need yeah, you need a little bit of space. Yeah. But yeah. I, I dig it a lot, and they do run a good shop. And that would be sweet if they expanded. It would be, be really good. They, they have a good culture there, too. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's trying to lift and get bigger. It's not just going in there and kind of going through the motions. Right. But it's also not a meathead gym. It, yeah. It's like a nice little in-between. Mm-hmm. There's this one dude that I always see there who's doing, like, like the turf field. He'll be doing, like, 30-yard sprints. Really? Yeah, like the back and forth, thing. back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And then after, like, 10 minutes, he's drenched. I'm like, hey, good on you. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to knock you for getting better. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it yeah. couldn't be me. Mm-hmm. Um, what, the this whole process and all of it, what was, like, the most, like, whether it was picking a school, not signing, getting drafted, the process of rookie ball to the big leagues, like, what yeah. was the most surprising or overwhelming part of all of it? Surprising. I mean, surprising part was getting called up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Days. But I would, I could say, um, as far as like, I could speak to like a struggle. Too. Sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like a part that was hard. So yeah. I played summer ball in Cape Cod in 2017. Okay. And I was terrible there. And that's supposed to be the league where you go and like establish yourself. Mm-hmm. And I was, I felt, I think I was the worst hitter there. <laughs> I felt like. Like I could not hit the broad side of a barn. Oh like, no! It just it just didn't work out. Like, yeah. I just, yeah. I don't know. I it was terrible. So that was. But then coming back from that, mm-hmm. that was one of the tougher things. Getting over that hump. Going Getting through over that, that. Yeah. Going through the that. Downturn. I actually felt helped me a ton going forward. Mm-hmm. Like just mentally and knowing that okay, you know, you might go through struggles here, but then eventually you get over the hump. Right. You know, it just doesn't keep going. You eventually got to work yourself out of it. But, but yeah, that was, like, not overwhelming, not surprising, but that was a struggle for sure. Why do you think that was? I just never really struggled like that in my life. Really? Like, I've always been, you know, I was always really good. So I'd go there, and in college I'd play really good too. And then Mm – Played really well in college. Yeah, and then i go to go there, and I'm terrible. And I'm like, man – you know, I've, I've never felt that before. Am I even good at baseball? Yeah, I was, yeah I'm like, I was sit, I was like sitting on the bench a bunch of days and everything, and mm-hmm. and that was another thing that was really good for me to learn too, down the road. Probably just patience. Yeah, learned that down the road for like when I got to Philly. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't, I'm, you know, I'm not even a starter right now or anything, but right. you know, going up there, I was a bench guy, mm-hmm. so that helped me there too. But just having like the mental state of like, this is okay, like. I yeah, and during the, oh during it, I was like, "This is the worst thing yeah. ever." I wanted to like jump off a cliff, <laughs> but but uh, I mean, yeah. Afterwards, I'm like, "That was good for me for sure." I needed that. 
that was like how do I say this? So like in that same line of questioning, like at, at any point of this baseball process, whether it's giving it to someone that's right now is deciding between Notre Dame or Duke, or they just they just finished col- or high school and they're about to get drafted and they or they could go to college, or if it's any part of the double triple A majors, like what's a piece of advice you'd give to any of them at any point? Like, well, what like are you picking think? a school or just a piece of baseball? Anything. Or baseball, like, like if or like what, anything. At any yeah. given level, like what piece of advice do you think would have helped you? Oh, big one of the biggest ones was not giving anybody credit. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? As far as like when you're playing on the field, yeah. You know, like, like uh, that's just interesting. Not don't give anybody credit. Huh. Yeah. It like us on the opposing team, especially. Right. right. So, or even on your team, really. <laughs> I mean. But no, yeah. break that down. So, so, um, or even on here. Yeah, no, seriously. But like, let's, I'll do a football analogy. Like, if you're playing football and you're going against CBC, right? And you're a smaller school, right? And you give them a ton of credit before the game's even started, you're done, right? Okay. You know, so for me as a baseball guy, um, you go and you play baseball and you're going up to your at bat, and this pitcher's like, that's what happened to me in Cape Cod. I fit, would face guys that are like SEC. Mm-hmm. I see them on TV. Big name dudes. And then I'm like, oh, man, you know, I'm facing this guy. He's going to strike me I'm, out. I'm like, he's got good stuff. Well, mm-hmm. I don't say that, but I'm like, he's got good stuff. And mm-hmm. he's throwing hard or he's got a good slider. And, right. and then next thing you know, I'm like, the eight bat's over before I even started. Mm-hmm. So, and that really helped me a ton going to the big leagues, too, getting called up because you start facing guys you've seen play the, play the game of baseball for like, yeah. 10, 15 years. Your entire life. And so just don't be impressed by them. Huh. Don't be, Don't give them any credit. Because, That's good. Yeah, because then you end up facing them, and they're like, they're not, this was they're nothing special. Right, just a dude playing yeah. the same sport. And trust me, there are there those guys that are yeah, really lights out. amazing, lights out, mm-hmm. special. Sure. You know, that blow your, that are like, wow, these guys are pretty good. Mm-hmm. But before, before you go in there against certain guys, you already make a picture of what they are. Right. And then... They end up... Uh, and then in your head, you're just catching up to them the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So, did you read that Matthew McConaughey book? Yeah, I did. It was really yeah, good. You know when he says, like, less impressed, mm-hmm. more involved? Yeah. It was kind of like that. Sure. That's a good analogy for it. So, kind of like in the lines of, like, imposter syndrome. Yeah, I think. You can't... Explain that for me. Like, it's just, like, people... Like, I don't know, who, like, people that have gotten into fame, like, really quickly. Like, super... Uh-huh. Like, movie stars, singers... These TikTok people, like imposter syndrome is like when you start like hanging out with people at that level, like you start getting into your own head, like what am I doing here? Like am, uh, I, yeah. am I really deserving yeah. of this right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, I remember him talking about that. But yeah. it's like at the same time, like you can't do that because you're, you're there. You're there you've, to do a job. Yeah, you've gotten there. So, yeah, you're, you're a part of it now. Yeah. No, you're in it. Yeah. Mm. So that's kind of like on the lo- along the same lines. Yeah, but that would be some a huge piece of advice. Really? That could kind of go for anything. Mm-hmm. But just don't. Don't give them credit, you know, because they're not. Maybe they're not as good as they I actually are. I guess that's literally all it is. It's just like they're just they're just people. Yeah. Like yeah, they're really good at the sport, but clearly so are you. Yeah. Like they got give yourself some credit. Too, yeah, exactly. You know? I dig that. I like yeah. that a lot. That was a huge. That was the one of the main things I learned going up there to Cape Cod, whether it was guys on my team, or guys. Uh, Guys I was facing, I'm like, man, these guys are pretty good. You know, I mm-hmm. hope I get some playing time. Or, man, this guy's pretty good. I hope I can get a hit off him. Right. It's just such a weak. Then you're already at a disadvantage. Exa- you're just at a weak mindset. No, you're like, no, I'm going to go up there and I don't care who he is. I'm going I'm to swing for the fences. Yeah, I'm I don't, smack care, a I don't care that I'm, yeah, I don't care that I'm in San Francisco. Right. And whatever. I'm going to just go and I'm going to play my game. Mm-hmm. So that would be a big piece of advice. I like that. That's good, though. That's good because I feel like a lot of you, like, I felt that, like, personally, just in, like, high school lacrosse. Like, I'd yeah. be going up a kid that I knew was, like, an All-American. I'm like, this kid's already going to burn me. Yeah. And then, like, at that point, like, he's, yeah, he's probably already burnt me. Yeah. I'm but then you end up, maybe you end up playing against him and you're like, he's good, but. Yeah, you know, it's not that good. But, he, but, like, I still had a good chance. There's a reason I'm guarding him. Yeah. 100%. 100%. That was a big, big piece of advice. I like that. Um. Hunter Schmidt actually gave me this question. Shout out Hunter. Hunter. Um, so he made the analogy. Actually, I don't remember. I asked him the other day, and he brought up, somehow he brought up, uh, I don't know the first name, Dansby. 
Yeah. The place with the Braves. Oh yeah, Hunter's a big uh, Vandy guy. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. He love w- Hunter. Yeah, Huge he went Vandy to guy. Dan's been yeah. to Vandy. Yep. Um, and Hunter was talking to him at some point, and he, I asked Hunter, and he's like, give him this, like in a roundabout way, give him this question, like. In reference to like high school sports, like your team, like you got a good group of buddies, and like you, you go to school yeah. together, you play together, you hang out together, like you've got a good like system there. And I'm assuming it was the same for Notre Dame, just because it's the same kind of a deal. You all go to school together with each other the whole time, mm-hmm. and like the tutor thing, like you have a support system, like you've got buddies. And how is that? Because like the MLB, yes, it's baseball, but it's a business, and they're there to make money. Yeah, like how. How did the support system change from going to college to them? Because, like, you were saying, like, when you went down to St. Pete's, like, you, you 10 guys walked in, you're like, I don't know any of these people. Yeah. And, like, yeah. now you've been in St. Louis. I'm like, whoever we were just talking about is here. Like, you can train with them, but you're not with these people in the off season. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's just as far as, like, relationships and stuff. And right. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it's different. Like, it was that was a big change or I guess transition for me too was um, high school great group of guys mm-hmm. uh, college like great dudes. awesome group of guys too right. like I still talk to high school and college mm-hmm. guys and especially especially college you're around them 24/7. All, 24/7 yeah you know Do another one like yeah I'll take another one like all the time you're around them and so then you go to pro ball mm-hmm. and you're not around them mm-hmm. and you're like then you come back from the off season and everybody's in their own town, right, going exactly. back home. See, so yeah, I was different. And like yeah. it, you get to, and like you get to wherever, whatever league. Like I'm sure you might live with guys, but it's not like at college. Like I, it doesn't even matter if you're playing a sport. Like you're within 50 feet of all of these guys. Yeah. So, um, like when I get up to Philly, I didn't. I knew a couple guys, but mm-hmm. um, but not real. Not those aren't my guys. You right. Know? Right. So. So you kind of because it's like it's like, like literally it's a business like it's like your work buddies. That's like, when sure you, they're your teammates, but that's when you realize it's a business. Yeah, right. And uh, like the higher you get up, guys have families, guys mm-hmm. have kids, guys have um, you know whatever it is off All the right. field. And so yeah, that's that was a that, that was a big change because in college you're at the field with them, then you come back mm-hmm. and you're hanging out with them at the dorms or in your apartments or whatever. Get beers on the weekend, et cetera. Et yeah, cetera. going out having a good time, but mm-hmm. then. When it comes to like pro ball, it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So in Double A this year, I had a guys I got drafted with. I was yeah. with them in Double A, and those are those are some of my best friends with the Phillies. And so that was a lot of fun for like a month. Mm-hmm. And then I end up getting called up, and you're no longer with them. No longer with them. Mm-hmm. And so then I still had some friends in Triple A that were some good guys, but then now I'm in Philly, and I have like one guy that I know mm-hmm. really well. And so it's different. That's it's crazy. like it's just like you're walking into a new team. Yeah. And you're just like, because it is like it's like that's, that's what it is, yeah. So you just you don't know anybody, you make friends and all that stuff. Yeah. How like just like in general, how often do you see these people? Like obviously you're training at the facility for five six hours a day, but like how often do you really see these people? So I'm with them. I mean, you see them. I'm with them every day. Is it the same thing as college? We were with them all day every day, or is like once like training and practice is over, is everyone going their ways? No. So I would say at the lower levels, mm-hmm. or like. Even in the minor leagues, mm-hmm. you're with them all the time. So because that's your crew, yeah, and and you're in like a small town, right? And, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's living in the hotel. Yeah. So in like AAA, we're in Lehigh Valley, and you know, we had kind of a younger team, but we go to the field at like twelve thirty, mm-hmm. do all our work, games at seven, play the game at seven, get done at like ten, ten thirty. Sometimes you hang out after. Maybe go out have a good time. Sometimes who knows? But just depending on what the next day is going. Yeah, but then uh, you know you're, and then you go back to the hotel. Sometimes you're rooming with guys to save money. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're around it. But then when you get to the big leagues, it's you know, uh, they're just older guys with families or guys with just different things going on. So and that's just how it is, and that's that's great. But it's just it's definitely different going up and down. How do you deal with that? Like, mentally, like, because, like, what we were talking yeah. before we even sat down, like, you're about to leave. I probably might not see you unless I see you at a game or something. I might not see you until October. Yeah. A lot of phone calls. Lot yeah. Of, a, a lot, lot of FaceTimes. A lot of FaceTimes. Um, a lot of – there's a lot of that. But then on top of that, you, you just have guys on your team that you kind of relate to. Mm-hmm. You're always going to find those guys, and you kind of gravitate towards them. Um, but 
also mentally, like it's also a job, you know? Right. Just like, it just like, yeah. Well, it, it, well, it is a job. So then, like, I, my buddy, you know, John Bazeski, like, yeah. he moved down to Fort Lauderdale, didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. And so, but he's doing it for a job. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, I, I always thought that was kind of similar. Like, that's fair. I you like know, that. You got to kind of get to know people and yeah. everything, and you start, you become friends. It's like the same thing. Huh. But, but but yeah, it's that's funny. But that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? That makes perfect yeah, sense. But it's, yeah. it's pretty similar. It's like yeah. going to a new city with new people. And, I mean, it is though. <laughs> I dig that. I like that. Mm-hmm. Good, um, good question, Hunter. Yeah, it was a good question. He see, like I we were playing Apex the other day, and he was like, "What's up? Like, how's this going?" I was like, "Good. I, I'm hoping to get mad on pretty soon." He's like, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, you got any questions? And like instantaneously, he's like, yeah, I got this very specific one. I was like, you know, he's been meaning to ask. That. So <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, what the like, hell? first time seeing him, he's like, yeah, hey, I got a question. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was awesome, but yeah, I don't know. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, what else I got for you? Um, I don't know. Oh, well, who's the most underrated person? Oh, who's the most player? Un- underrated player? Yeah, in general. <laughs> Um, or that you've played with. Yeah. Uh, underrated. Uh, there's this kid in AAA names. Uh, or I've been with him coming up all the way through in the minor leagues. Mm-hmm. Named Dalton Guthrie. Mm-hmm. He's like the smartest kid I've ever met in my really? life. Like as far as baseball. What does like, he play? Everywhere, but he's like a shortstop second base. Oh, so he's a stud. Yeah, he's, he's, a, good, he's a good player. But he's just, just really smart the way he thinks about the game. And sometimes... He's not the biggest guy, and sometimes that's hard to – you got to watch him for, like, two or three games, and you're like, oh, man, this kid is, just thinks the game at a different level. Really? Yeah. So, and I – I again, I, I I hated doing it with talking because in Davis the other day we talked about soccer for, like, an hour, and I just compared everything to football. <laughs> but it's, like, an easy analogy. Like, when you're smart with football, it's a lot of pre-snap and post-snap. Mm-hmm. And so, like, what makes him smart in baseball? So, it's like that, too. It's, like, pre-pitch. Like, just and analyzing where the... Pre, yeah, so, like, there was this one play I thought it was the smartest play I've ever seen. We were in Akron, Ohio, and he... I think it's so awesome that you can remember it like that. I just, yeah, there's certain things I'll remember. This was one of them. But, yeah, we are in Akron, Ohio, and it's, like, later in the game, during the day, and he's in center field. I'm in right field. And so this play happens like a bunch of crazy stuff happened. Ball gets thrown around everywhere. Mm-hmm. And there was no one covering second base. And the guy who had hit the ball was running from home. He hits the ball. He runs all the way to second base. There's no one. Co- he's he, No one's covering second base. He sprints in from center field. And he's like yelling. He's like, someone go to third, someone go to third. Because there was for some reason no one was at third, too. It's a massive clusterfuck. Hold on. It was, yeah, it was a clusterfuck. And so he... He points to third base, so then the pitcher like goes to third base, but it, as he does that, he's going to cover second. Someone throws the ball to him to second, and he tags the guy out. Wow. And I'm like, I saw the whole play happen in front of me, but I was just like, man, he was just thinking way ahead. He was two steps ahead. No one no one would have thought that. No. So, But he's, but certain guys that are super smart like that, mm-hmm. with, as far as thinking the game, sometimes you got to watch them a couple times and, sure. and see, see things it. like that. Yeah. You end up picking up. Is that something that's like differentiates like a lot of good players? Is that yeah, a spell, yeah. obviously speaking for the field. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys just the way they think and stuff. Do it's, you, it's super like little things when they can do the little things. Is that like in like an innate thing that he's just like wicked quick thinking like that, or is that something you can build on? So like how would you build on that? Well, I think. With him, so his dad played in the big leagues for like 16 years. Jeez. So he's been around the game his whole yeah. life. So I think he's just – like he's obs- he, he loves baseball, obsessed with it. So mm-hmm. I think he's just – he sees it in that way. He's always been around it. I don't know. Maybe he can just see things, you know. Mm-hmm. So That's sweet. I don't know. Maybe someone – analogy, someone that's been around basketball mm-hmm. their whole lives just right. kind of sees the floor differently. It's just like or maybe, you know – quarterback whose dad was a quarterback you know I was just old the, things the coach's just, son yeah and they the coach's son usually knows a bit more than the other kids they just kind of see things differently and right all that but yeah he's he's definitely one of the most underrated players really yeah Dalton Guthrie where's he at right now he finished in triple a and so Dalton he went Guthrie yeah <laughs> what's up Dalton yeah he's a great guy is he our age year older 
He went to uh, he went to Florida. Yeah. Round six. Round six. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Yep. That's the team name. That's the team name. Dude, I might have to get an Iron Pigs jersey. There's some great names. That's a good one. What are the other good ones? Um. Oh, that's so awesome. Yep. Plas the Flying Squirrels, Blue Claws are the other team you played for. Yep. Blue the Claws. Rail Riders. Yeah. Um. Another good one was uh, you know Plas. Yeah, Mike Michael. Plasma. Yeah. yeah, Mike Plasmeyer. He was the uh, Montgomery Biscuits <laughs> before he got traded. <laughs> no way. Yeah, the Montgomery Biscuits. What league is that? That was uh, Double A, Double A for the Rays. Oh, bro, I've got a Durham. I've got a Durham Bulls jersey. Yep, Durham Bulls. With my and my name for some reason, my dad had it, and he doesn't wear jerseys, so he gave it to me. So I've got this custom Bulls jersey. It's sick. Uh huh. It's super dope. Durham Bulls is uh, some ma major league. Movie. Yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are the Dayton Dragons? That's where I'm from. I went to a shitload of Dayton Dragons games. You're from there? Yeah, that's where I was like born. When I moved to St. Louis, I moved from Dayton. Oh, so that's in Indiana, Ohio. Oh, yeah. Ohio, Ohio. I, I grew up in Xenia, which is like, I don't know, like 20 minutes outside of Dayton. But I yeah. went to like I've been to a shitload of Dayton Dragons games. I had like their trading cards and everything. Really? Yeah. 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 I've actually been that's really, awesome. I've really been wanting to get a hat. Dayton Dragons. You should. What are they? Are they AAA? Oh no, they're. So they were low A. They might have got changed to high A. Okay. There was a bunch of changes. What do you mean by low year. A and high A? Is that the A minus A plus? Yeah. So it'd be like, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know they were that low. Yeah, they were. But those games were probably rowdy, though. Dude, they were awesome. And they were so much fun. Like when I played for, oh, Jersey Shore is not on here anymore, but Jersey Shore was low A. And the, they uh, were. The Claws? The, the Blue Claws. And they were, that was a blast. These homeboys? Yep. That's an awesome logo, too. Yeah. A surfing crab. That's incredible. Yeah. They would get, and then there'd be like five, 6,000 people there every night. Yeah, they were the Montgomery Biscuits, too. The Montgomery, dude, that is so funny. I know. Toledo Mud Hens, Hartford Yard Goats. There's some awesome, like, if you were looking for a good hat. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm, minor I'm, league baseball. That's what I'm going to do after this. There's a, I think there's a team out. California, maybe mm -hmm. affiliate. I forget who it is. Maybe the Dodgers, but they were the Trash Pandas. No way. And now they're the Space Cowboys. Maybe the Trash Panda, like a raccoon. They're like a Trash Panda. Yeah, that's that was, awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Are there? Yeah. Um, so what are the thirty MLB teams? Thirty two. Thirty. I think there's thirty two. Thirty two. Are there thirty two of these in every league? Uh, so there's thirty two of them, but they're split up. So it, there'll be like. So, like, that's our double A right there. There's three double A leagues, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so you'll have, you know, we're in a double A league with 12 other teams. And there will be one with, like, 10, and there will be another one with 10. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So between double, single, and triple, there's, like, 90 teams. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of teams. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of teams. Wow, I didn't know that. But that kind of makes sense because I always see that, like, X, Y, and Z are feeder teams for yeah whoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's, yeah, everybody's got at least four affiliates. That makes sense. With though. four with four unique names. That's so awesome. What yeah. are the, uh, my buddy Bennett lives down in Springfield. He goes to a lot of those Cardinals games. Springfield Cardinals. Yeah. yeah. What are they? The, are they triple A, double A? They're double A. He says those get rowdy too. They, I think they do, yeah. Which I can imagine. And their jerseys, their logo is sweet. It's awesome. So I, they're more traditional, right? They're mm -hmm. like the, the Cardinals. So it, it looks just, like it looks like the St. Louis Cardinals. It's jersey. like almost like a throwback logo. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a nice park too. Um, okay, that's another thing. Where's yeah. been your most favorite place to play? Like, because that's on my bucket list. I want to see all thirty-two MLB stadiums and yeah. all thirty-two NFL stadiums. Which ones? Okay, let's go NFL. Which ones have you been to? I've only been to a few. I saw Rams at the Dome. I saw Arrowhead this year. That was awesome. Yeah, that had to be sweet. I went to a Colts game at the old stadium. I haven't been to the new stadium. I've only been to like a handful. Yeah. And I think I've been to the Tennessee. I saw a Colts-Titans game. I've been to two Colts games, and I feel like the Colts-Titans game was in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I saw Peyton Manning play. That was sick. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. but like baseball, I saw a bunch of Reds games. I've been to a ton of the Red, I, the mm -hmm. Cincy's field. That field's really sweet. Mm -hmm. With those like two big oh. smoke tower things that shoot out yeah. fireworks. Yeah. And then I've been to Bush, and I, went, I think that's it actually. Yeah. Where where have been the where, what's your favorite that have been? 
Okay, um, let's put Philly number one. Let's go ahead and give him yeah. that. I would say the best one was... Uh, and for what reason? Probably San Francisco. Really? I've heard that. Isn't that right it on the water? It was beautiful, yeah. Right on the water. Right on the water. So, I don't know just everything about it. And maybe because my first time playing sure. up there. Sure, it'll hurt a whole special hit. memory. Yeah. yeah, and then I started my first game there, too. Mm. Oh, really? Well, yeah, so I get called up and I got that hit, and then the next day I started. So it was kind of like a bunch oh, of stuff. Oh, okay, kinda, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah so it was kind of, I don't know. But not just that, but the park itself is so nice. and. Mm-hmm. It was I always like, remember those videos of Barry Bonds. There's always be people sitting in the kayaks. Like, launched them into yeah, the water. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, it's a cool park. That's definitely one of the coolest ones. I've got a buddy who lives up in Seattle, and a few of my friends moved up there with him after school. I heard that place is nice. Yeah, I've heard the Mariner Stadium is really cool. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. I haven't been up there. I think I think it is, too. I've heard that also. So how many stadiums have you played in? Um, San Francisco, Philly, Washington. You played here, didn't you? No, but I was on the taxi squad. What does that mean? So, like, during COVID, they have extra guys they bring on the trip. I see. Yeah. And so I was, like, an extra guy. Sure. So I got to hit BP and stuff, but that was about Here it. Here Bush? Yeah. Dude, that's it so cool. Sweet. Yeah. That's like a childhood dream right I there. I know, and it was funny. Like, everybody knew it. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, he's from St. Louis. Like, take some videos. So my hitting coach, like, taking videos of me and pictures. <laughs> it was pretty freaking funny. But, uh. So, uh, I think a bunch so, of our friends were there, weren't they? I forget who I I saw somebody there. Because a few people have seen you certain different places, right? Yeah. Um, Milwaukee, I saw. Uh, oh, and I don't know if you know any of them. But it doesn't think matter. Of like friends. Yeah. Of, yeah. Every city. That, it's funny. Like every city you go, there's some people you know. And that's like so maybe cool. they come out to the game. But yeah, I've been to. Washington, San Francisco, Philly, Milwaukee. Um, Dude, this is so crazy. Colorado and St. Louis. I didn't play there, but I was. I heard I the call of the Rocky Stadium. I heard that was cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Because you see the mountains from there, don't you? you? See the mountains, and then it's the parks. The ball just takes off there because the altitude. Oh, that's yeah. fun. So it's cool. Um, but yeah, that's. I think that's about it. Not a ton. New York, the Mets. That was pretty wild. I was a, for whatever, actually it was because of a, like MLB, like 05, the show or something. David Wright was on the cover. Yeah. And I was just like always low key a Mets fan because I uh-huh. thought he was so sick. Oh, he was a great player. I think he just retired a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah I you, think he did. Yeah. I liked him a lot. He was Legend. cool. Yeah. He was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good player. You got any buckets? So, like, you hit your first home run. Yeah. Do you have any, like, bucket list items for the, being up there? Um, you stole a base, didn't you? Stole a base, yeah. To be honest with you, not a ton of, like, I mean, I have goals and stuff. Right, but, right, but not obviously. Like, yeah, like, you want to play, like, be an all-star. Or you mm-hmm. want to, you know, like, well, first it would be, like, to start, you know, like, earn a starting job. Yeah. But um, or even to make the team. But, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I haven't gone too deep into the bucket list things. But, I don't know, it would be cool to win a World Series. Sure, and All sure, that right. stuff, you know. That would probably be the best thing. Mm-hmm your team and everything like that. I can't even imagine that. That'd no. be crazy. Oh, yeah. And you're talking about the Super Bowl, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, too. Gosh. Well, I don't know, like, throwing someone out from center or something like that. Like, anything that, like, you've always just, like, thought of that would be, like, damn, that would be sweet to do in a game. No. Even bringing it down on, like, a one-game level thing. Maybe. You already hit, hit a home run. If you hit, like, three home runs in a game, that yeah. would be one of the things I'd be, that would be, like, man, now, I didn't even know I could do that. That'd swing for the fences, though. That's right. You're yeah. only going to do it if you fucking swing for it. That's right. Yeah. I love that. That'd be something, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. How often has that happened? Uh, it'll happen like What's five it? or six times a year. Someone will someone will do it. Otani? Maybe Otani. Has, has he done it? I don't know, but I think he just put on the cover of the next game. Yeah. I think. Have I, you played that game, the show? Uh, not a few years. I've heard the new ones are really good. They're cool, yeah. They're fun. Do you play them? I have it. I don't play it a ton. I'm not like the biggest video game guy, but but those are fun. I love sports games. Play like we rip FIFA a lot. FIFA. We play FIFA a lot. I like NHL. Mm. Love NHL. That's probably second on the list for us. And then uh, the show is a lot of fun. I feel like you'd have to buy the show just to have yourself in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's definitely a good reason to get it. Yeah, that's pretty cool to see that. <laughs> was it? Was it cool? Yeah. No. Like, did I didn't they even like, know. scan your face and all that? 
Oh no, I look. I don't look. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ugly. I I look brutal on that thing, but uh, maybe that looks like me. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe you are. Really <laughs> maybe ugly. that's what it is. What I look like, but uh, but no, that's cool. They they didn't do any of that though. Hmm. They, I don't know. Probably maybe. just because there's so many of you. Yeah, you can't do all the minor league guys. People, yeah, yeah you, it's hard to get everybody to do something like that. But it's cool to see it though. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So that's I, like your six year old dream right there. Yeah, that was that was one of them. I think my brother. Was playing it, and he had me on there. Really? Like, oh, no way I'm on there? That's funny. I didn't even know I was even on there, but it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what else I got for you? Um, I don't know, man. This has been awesome. It's good stuff. What, yeah. else you, what else you got for me? Man. Tell me something most people don't know. Most people don't know? Man, that's a tough one. What are you guys doing in your free time? Uh, I mean, obviously a lot of stuff's like train everything, but my girlfriend and I will go to like restaurants and hang out and, and I don't know, s- certain things. Like you just said, like you don't play a lot of video games. Are there kids on the team or guys on the team that like once training's over, they're just glued to the thing? Oh yeah. Oh, that might be half the team. No way. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Half the team. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be. I'm Do they play you. the show? Oh, yeah. Some guys play the show. A lot of guys will play, like, Call of Duty. That is so fun. Love Call of Duty. Big Some guys will guys. do... Uh, I've been ripping Apex a- a lot. Apex. Apex is sick. Yeah. Apex is fun. Uh, what's the the game with the uh, Rocket League? Rocket League. That's a good one. Um, I play way too much Rocket League. Do you? I spend too much money on that game. <laughs> one of my buddies on uh, my double-A team was... I, he could have gone pro. In Rocket League, no way. He's amazing. Yeah, it, and he would. It's so funny. He would like talk shit to like little kids and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so much fun. But uh, I just sit there and watch. It's a good time watching it. So yeah. you leave in a week from today. Yeah. Walk me through your next month, not day to day. Yeah. So you're doing, you're on St. Pete's. You have mm-hmm. spring training. Is yeah. okay. Actually, now I thought of that earlier. That was one of the ones I forgot. Um, was it our lacrosse trips? Uh, every spring break, we went down to Orlando, stayed at Disney, mm-hmm. and we played at the the complex down there. Yeah, like the ESPN Worldwide Sports Center, or whatever. Yep. And yeah. the, I think the Cardinals, that's where they are. No, so they're they're in Palm Beach. Okay, I don't know who it was then. Which is about, I would say that's almost two hours away. Maybe they were there for that a was, game. That was the Braves. The Braves play there. That's probably what or they it was. used to. They just got a new facility. Maybe it was the Braves. I don't. So this was back in twenty. 15, 14, and 13. Yeah. But we always saw teams warming up. And yeah. so you just said they got a new facility. Does every team have its own facility or, like, four teams at one center? So every team has its own facility. Uh, Usually, well, they'll share them. They'll share them. So, like, probably all down south. So, they, oh, yeah. Everyone's in either Florida or Arizona. Oh, that's cool. So, I guess I'm at West Coast, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of West Coast teams are in Arizona. Yeah. Because they're closer. Right, exactly. But uh, yeah, wide world of sports. That's the that's the Braves. Yeah, that place was sweet. That yeah. place is really cool. I played there when I was like ten years old. Some tournament or something. And it was like one of the coolest things I ever did. It's huge. Yeah, we got to play on the stadium field. Whoa, all the time that's too, cool. Which is cool. Um, we literally every time we were there for I don't know how I don't know I don't know the cheerleading world. But every year, there was always a time. There was just every, yeah. it was like the world's cheerleading thing. So, like, whenever we, like, there'd be us and like four other lacrosse teams at our hotel, and then just like 1,500 cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. Every, it seemed, I swear, every time I was there too, it probably seemed like that. Probably. There was like not only cheerleading, but then soccer teams. Yep. Because mm-hmm. of the back soccer fields. Mm-hmm. Tons of soccer teams. And then probably baseball too, mm-hmm. honestly. It was yeah. sweet. Those trips are so much fun. But yeah, your next month, what does it look like? So open it, let's say opening day is April one, whatever. Yeah, whatever happens. But yeah. um Monday, yeah, I'd leave on Monday, get down to clear water and then When does it start? Does it start Tuesday? So are well, you there I'll for start every week? well because of the lockout and everything. Oh, I forgot that's going on. Yeah, I wanna so know about that too. Yeah, I can't even go into the facility. Really? I can't talk to them or anything like that. So tell me about this lockout. I was reading something about that yeah. the other day. Yeah. Well, why is it and what's going on? Where is it at right now? So is it over pay or play again, or player rights or something? Yeah, that's what the last it's one like was. Getting it? paid and stuff like that. Yeah. So it happens every five years. Okay. 
and the renegotiations. I yeah, I don't know too much specifically, but um, what have you heard? I've heard pretty much that they've kind of at a standstill a little bit. They're making some progress, but pr- the issues are like free agency. They want player the players union wants players to become a free agent earlier. So right now in the calendar year. No, so you got to wait six years Whoa, to become a free agent. Really? I'm sure in um, other NFL too. NFL's four years. I can, again, I can only speak for the NFL, but your rookie yeah. contract's four years. Yeah, you so, have a fifth year option. So baseball, it's um, right now you get three years at the minimum, three years at arbitration, and then you become a free agent. <sighs> and so they're trying to slim all those down to two and two yes, something exactly two two, and then you get a free agent. But I mean, the owners aren't. I don't think they want to do that. So last time I heard they, uh, they did away with the free agency thing. So it's still going to be six years, but now they're trying to get arbitration to, what does that mean? So you pretty much have a little negotiating power after the three years after it'd be right now, after three, they're wanting to get it to two from what I heard, but arbitration pretty, pretty much means that you think you're worth this much. The other team thinks you're worth this much. And then it goes to a third party if you guys don't agree. So, really? So you have a little bit. Of, you have a little bit of power. Okay. Negotiating power. So there's a lockout right now. Yeah. You get down there Monday. So I get down there Monday. Let's and then, say this lockout wasn't going on. Oh yeah. When like when would stuff start? When's, I would, I would go in there. I'd go in there on. It's gonna take me a couple days to get down there, but I'd go in there on Wednesday. Okay. To the facility, and I would go and. Work out and train and so, but this lockout, you can't do anything on the facility. Yeah, I got to do my own stuff. And this yeah. could go on until who knows? Jeez, I know. I I think that's scary. Of, it's a little weird. It's not scary. I feel like they'll figure it out. Right, they're going to. But it's a multi. Yeah, they're trying to business. make some money. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's weird. Definitely weird. When do games start? Game. How many games are there in the preseason in spring ball? 25. And are you playing with the Phillies or are you playing on? It would be it'd be with the Phillies. Yeah. So it would be, yeah, it would be with the Phillies. And we would just play other teams. And you probably just play the teams that are in Florida. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's for a month. That's for a month. And then after that month, we would go to, uh, I mean, I'd have to make the team. But right. it, it would be going to Philly. Yeah. So to dig in on that, what – you can speak for you, like speak from your experience, and if you want to speak for yourself, but like in general. So you got brought up last year, and I don't want to say it's a shoe in because it's not. You have to make the team. But what does it take? Is it like a clear improvement? You're just better than the next guy. Like, what does it take for someone to make the team the following year? Uh, I mean, that depends on a ton of stuff, but yeah, like who they brought back, et cetera. Yeah, who they signed, who they brought back. Um, How many people on a roster? So there's 11 guys on the field. 26. Nine guys on the field. Yeah, nine. There's so 26 be, on the traveling roster. Traveling roster is 26. And then there's another roster, the 40-man roster. Is that the taxi? And, well, that's it's not taxi, but they can bring you up and down. Practice squad. In most in most cases. So you're, if you're on the 40-man roster and you're in the minor leagues, they could bring you up. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. So um, what separates guys, I mean, it just – I don't know. We'll see, but I feel like a lot of times it's just how you look and um, who they signed, who's who's there right now. You know, like Bryce Harper's in right field. You're not gonna right. You're not, gonna not be looking for you're right probably fielder. not gonna be playing right field. <laughs> <laughs> so on the MVP, um, but uh, yeah, just a lot of things go into it. So I'm on the side of I don't really like to look too much. Yeah, no. If you you know like too much that. into it, and right. I'm just like. Just go in there and do my thing, and do your if, best. if whatever happens, happens. What have you been working on the off season? Uh, just like what were your mental notes after the after last year? That you're like, I gotta do this this off season. For me, it was just hitting fastballs better, and then it was um, like working on my defense because I just started playing first base, and so working on that, working on third base too, because I started playing that too, and then. Yeah, just like hitting fastballs better. Maybe maybe a little more power, a couple more home runs. I did see that. Because that's what everybody wants to see. Right. Put on you the know. show. Yeah, right. Get the big bucks. I did see that you recorded, for like a first baseman, you recorded like the fastest base speed or something like that. Yeah. For, was yeah. that for a rookie or for the like entire league? 
Do you know what uh, I'm talking about? No. What is that? You, I think it was like on a stolen base or something that you recorded the fastest base speed for really? first baseman. Yeah. Huh. I oh, literally, wow. I was like, because I didn't know the teams. That's you, wild. I didn't know the teams you played for, so I literally yeah. just Googled your name. And like yeah. a paragraph in, that popped up. And I was like, damn, I knew he had wheels, but Look geez. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, dang, I didn't know that. <laughs> Learned something <laughs> new today. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> but, uh. I you know what I think a lot of first base you know like first basemen tend to be like bigger power hitting right. guys and then I'm an I was a first baseman baby <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you eat some home runs <laughs> no <laughs> but uh, no it was just I, I guess some bigger guys play there and I'm like an outfielder playing there mm-hmm. so I tend to be on the faster side I didn't know it was like that though holy cow so in that same kind of realm like you've played outfield your whole life and I'm sure you dabbled in other positions you pitched in high school etc. But at that level, how hard is it or how difficult is it for you to play outfield one game and then there's they're just like, no, you're playing first base today? Is it really that different? It's just, yeah, I mean. It's I'm sure how you think about, like, literally, like, the pre, pre-pitch 100%, thing. 100%, yeah. But playing, is it really that different? So playing. I don't want to downplay. No, yeah, no, you're not. No, mentally, I would say, like, playing in general, you – Outfield's weird. Like, you kind of check out a little bit because you're so far away. Right. You're, in, sta- you're standing there for yeah, sometimes a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Infield, you're you're in it. So, mm-hmm. at any point, the ball could come to you real quick. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I'm at first base and I'm holding the guy on first base, you know, the pitcher could throw over to me at any time. So, True. you're kind of just got to be more locked in. Like, if you're playing football, too, imagine if you're, like, you were a tight end, right? Mm-hmm. Like, a little tight end. So, then – Imagine if they're like, nah, you're going to go over and play, like, left guard. Mm -hmm. And you're like, maybe your mindset switches a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. Like, the mechanics are the same, but, like, how I'm thinking about the play is completely different. Like, okay, I got some different assignments. I got to take on this guy. You know, there's different, like, things I got to listen to. Mm -hmm. Like, in first base, like, there's different signs I got to look for and certain stuff like that. So, How is it? I, like, fanboy, like, how is it playing with Bryce Harper? That's so nuts, dude. You play with the MVP. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, I know. He, no, he's. You think about that? Do you, like, step back and think about that ever? I, I have a little bit. But, he, I mean, he's he's been a great guy to me. Really? And, uh, seems, uh, yeah, yeah, like, he, he's just been a good guy and um, just a normal guy. And but That's what we were talking about, like, the imposter thing. It's like, yeah, like, like me sitting on my couch, like, it's crazy, but, like, He's just like so. Yeah, teammate. I really did that. I really was like, I'm going in there. He's gonna be my teammate, right? You know, just like all the other guys in there, mm-hmm. you know, they're gonna be my teammates. You know, just like I was, if I'm getting called up to Loa, mm-hmm. it'd be like that. So, um, but yeah, it's it. Looking back on it and looking at it, it's a little crazy. It's wild, but dude. um, especially him winning the MVP, he played so good. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, going in there and just, he's been great. He's been, he's been talks. Talks me, kind of take. He honestly does that with all the young guys. Really, a lot of the young guys. That's cool. At least this past year, a lot of the young guys. He's been, been awesome. Doing almost it. like a mentor. Yeah, good for I, him. That's yeah. really cool. Because what I, is he? Thirty something, low thirties. He might be like twenty nine. Really, I think twenty eight or twenty nine. That's why I have this here. Convenient. That's so crazy though, dude. Right, I couldn't believe it, Bryce Harper. Yeah, there you go, twenty nine. Yeah, that's right. Just turned twenty nine. Yeah. From Vegas. Where'd he go to school? Um, he left he went to high school till he was sixteen, got his GED, then went to a junior college. So he's been that for a minute. And so he, he knew I think he knew. I can't speak for him, but I'm sure right. he knew he was gonna be um a big time pick and everything, so he just wanted to get it started. So he's obviously been that dude for a while, but this right here said he has been touted as a five tool player. At, so at that level, at the MVP level, what's separating those guys? Is it like the pre-pitch thing, or are these guys? It's just because they're insane hitters. Or they're like, why? Like, yeah. Is it because that they're just seeing the ball that much better? Like, literally, like what is separating him, like the top ten players, from like the next ten players? Hmm. Is that too broad of a question? Not really. I would say that. I mean, I don't know personally, but I would. Like how you were talking about, like, I would you just see those plays happen, and it's like, oh, that was – I didn't see that coming. I would think, I mean, for sure talent. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Like Naturally. talent at everybody that level is so close, but I mm-hmm. think those guys it's even better. And then a lot of it too, like swing mechanics, like their swing might be even better than some other guys. Even so, if it's by a percentage. Or even if it's just for 
you know, maybe they like get this arm up a little bit higher and they're able to get to better pitches and it could just be little things like that. Right. But, and, the but then also, level. also mentally too. Sometimes those guys are, you know, whether it's experience or um, experience or just, you know, determination, who knows, but it, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, there's not a ton. Baseball is such a weird game too, you know, like there's a little bit of luck involved with certain things. What do you mean? Well, you know, you could hit a ball to the, the left side, you know, the third baseman, and he dives for it, doesn't get it. But then, you know, another guy could do the same thing. He dives and gets it. So there's a, there's a little bit of that, too. So some things definitely go your way for those guys also. Have you, you know, felt that? Certain times. You hit, when you're going good, mm-hmm. when you're hitting really well, things are dropping, things are falling. Right. Like I could hit one Like literally 10 hands. feet farther than what. Ex- or a foot farther. Yeah. You know, like I could hit one off my hands and it barely goes over. I get a hit. Mm-hmm. You know? Whereas, you know, it always seems like when you're going bad and you're striking out and you're not hitting very well, the umpire's calling what pitch like this far off the plate on you and you're like, come on. Yeah. Come or on. like, or yeah, or like the guy makes the diving catch when you need the hit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it comes in waves. But yeah, I, not a ton separates those guys, I feel like. Maybe experience and right. just mentally they're, they can do it and also a little bit of talent. But, but yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. Up there, it's, it's, such small little differences in guys. So you go into spring training and with your training, is that, is that what you're working on? Like hitting fastballs and stuff? Is that still what you're going for like this yeah, season? I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to hit some fat. Yeah. Cause I, I think I got fed a lot of curveballs and sliders and change ups. And they probably got the statistics on that. Oh yeah. They always, yeah. There's so much analytics mm-hmm. that go on in the game of baseball. Now that's where it's going. So many, so much analytics. So, you know, oh, you know, he hits the outside pitch really good. Mm-hmm. We're going to throw him in. You know, they know all that type of stuff. Right. Yeah. So, but it's crazy. It's wild, dude. It's so crazy yeah. to hear all this. It's like <laughs> I've heard, like, this and that and the other thing, but, like, to actually hear it from you, mm-hmm. I, can't ima- I, I can't I literally can't imagine, and I don't. Yeah. It's one thing, like, sitting in, like, the green seats at Bush and, like, being that close to the field. I can't imagine actually being out there. That's so sick. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's been a long road. I mean, a lot of hard work. A lot, lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, man. Because what are you, 25 now? 25 now, yeah. And you – so seven years of high-level baseball. Yeah, yeah. And even, even in high school, I would say, like, my first three years in high school, it was – it started getting really serious – so I, you know, I was I ended up dislocating my shoulder in high school. I remember that. You remember that? You missed football. Miss football. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I went to a showcase, did really well, and they were like started getting interest from colleges, and that's when I kind of shut everything else down, and everything got tailored towards baseball after that. So it kind of, I don't know, kind of got really serious then. So, but I love playing. I love when guys play all different types of sports. I think that's, that's where you were. You were three sports. Yeah, dude. I think that's super important for guys. I agree. You know? I agree. But then I do think at a certain point. You have to focus. You got you to gotta focus. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember at CBC. Because they want you to play all the sports. Yeah. Well, I, I'm telling you, I, do you remember at CBC, like, football would have summer practices? Like, dude, I remember freshman year going playing summer football. Yeah. I remember – uh, it's like six in the morning. We were like five, 14 years 14. old. Fourteen. I, I remember. I remember it was Pingle or remember Coach Bethany. Yeah, dude, I was actually thinking about him the legend. other day. He came across my Twitter I love the that other guy. day. Yeah, I, I love. I love Coach Bethany. I only played football for a year, but he was a great guy to me. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, I remember he was like, "Orvin, get out there!" And he like ran out there, caught a pass. And I was just thinking about that the other day. I was like, "Dude, we were out there fourteen, like summer." Had to have been July or something. Dude, it was so hot. Getting ready. And it was then unbelievably yeah, hot. Yeah, and I was just trying to make it to a couple because of baseball. Right. And then basketball in the fall, they were having scrimmages mm-hmm. indoors. And then baseball has winter workouts. Yeah. And so it gets really hard if trying you're playing all of them. If that. you're playing all of them, mm-hmm. it gets hard. But I do th- I think it's important for was a little I, while. Especially as a young kid. Yeah. Like high school's a different story, but as like a young kid, like even I don't even think before high school you should specialize in one sport. You're going to get burnt out. No, I agree. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I remember, like, the select few kids that did play even three, like, well, two sports. Like, fall and spring is one thing. Yeah. Like, the kids that would do, like, football and wrestling. 
or like the few kids that did football and basketball or yeah. basketball and lacrosse or soccer and basketball. Like as soon as their season ended, they were at the next practice the next day. Yeah. And that's just way. And like I did it's the, a little too, I did the cross. And like, as soon as football was ended, like I had, I had already missed like a few off season workouts. And I was just like, dude, this is ever going to stop. Yep. And then, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, my dad talks about, it. he's, he played football and uh, basketball. Mm-hmm. And he was he was a good player, and it just I think he got burnt out over time. It's easy to yeah. It's With just, that kind of stuff, when you're 14 and like you have summer, you've got foot summer practices at seven in the morning, four days a week. Like it's easy to get burnt out of it. Yeah, and looking back on it, you're probably like happy you went through some of that. I'd kill to and, go back to and that. And right you would now. do anything to be there, right? But at the but also look like it is a lot. So and it's just a commitment. But I yeah I would say like if you're a young kid and Definitely play as many as you can. And try then them all. Try them all and keep playing. Like, then you get in high school, keep playing as many as you can play. And then when you realize, like, mm-hmm. okay, I kind of got a future in maybe this. Or maybe you don't have a future in any of them, and that's fine. Keep playing them all. But yeah. for me, it was like, man, baseball, you know, an injury kind of put me there. But mm-hmm. then baseball, I could kind of tell, was something that I could go far in. So then I was sure. like, you know what, I'm just going to put everything I got into this. And it was in my sophomore year. I even thought that was a little early. But my injury kind of did that. I think that's wild because, like, in the lacrosse world, like, if yeah. you're not committed going into your junior year, you're not going D1. Really? It's all the kids that are going D1 at the, like, they're all committed their sophomore year. No way. It's why it's, it's honestly aren't disgusting. They, aren't some of them older? Like, what, lacrosse kids? Well, I know there was one kid. Um, a lot of them will do a fifth year of yeah, high school. That's okay. That's what I was. They'll that's PG, what I was yeah, yeah. And if they don't get the look, they'll go in PG somewhere out east, which is just I forget what it stands for. But they do like a, essentially a fifth year of high school at like a boarding school. Yeah, and it's like Deerfield and like literally like the heart, like the feeder school for like Yale and stuff like yeah. that. And because there were, we, I had some buddies at Notre Dame that. Um, yeah, Notre Dame had a, and they did, and there was one kid. I remember he was a year older, mm-hmm. and I think he did that mm-hmm. in a fifth, but, fifth year of high school. Yeah, and like, th- yeah. yeah, like think yeah. about how much more developed you are with one more year. Oh, yeah. it's insane. And then you go in with freshmen that are eighteen year, yeah, that, like eighteen and nineteen. It's a big jump. It's a big jump. Like my senior year to my freshman year of college, and that's literally think just, about how big that transition was. Yeah, and then, and then. You know, if you got just mentally too. Exactly, mentally. That's the big thing. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't think people realize. It's like, yeah, you can love the sport, but if you're not, there, if you're like still a 16 year old in your head, good luck. Yeah, have yeah. fun, man. Yeah, it just takes a little bit to, to get to it. Mm-hmm. I love playing all the sports, so and I think like, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, but that's I think why like I still stuck with because I, I got burned out of football for sure like at really like I think like sophomore year I wanted to quit playing yeah. and my parents like you're gonna like just trust us you're gonna hate yourself if you quit and like I we won and like I'm glad I didn't stop playing yeah but like that's what was nice about like in the middle of football season where you're like oh this sucks it's like well in a few months we'll be playing the cross right and then it's like or baseball and like same thing like you're halfway through that season it's like well in six months we'll be playing football so like um, I'm only doing this for so long. Right, right, yeah. But I think it, like, well, so you played baseball. Well, uh, so that happened, was that sophomore year, that your injury? Yeah, sophomore year. Because you played football, basketball, and baseball. Yeah. All your freshman year. Yeah. And then the injury happened sophomore year during football season. Right. So between those three sports. Or it happened right before football season. What happened? I dove for a ball, <sighs> summer baseball, can't, my shoulder came out. Just landed on it? Yeah, just landed on it, and then it didn't go back in. Damn. It stayed out. My coach had, like... I remember that sling. Yeah. My coach had to come in and, like, push it in. And then uh, I was, like... Because my freshman year, mm-hmm. that had happened to me, like, four or five times. Really? Just, yeah. like, just let boys pop in, it in out? In football, when we were playing football, uh-huh. yeah. And... Uh, I think Ian Nelson, like, threw me a pass back here, and I reached back, and it came out. <sighs> and went right back in. But I fought through it for the whole year. And then um, summer baseball came around. Everything was fine. I did PT on it and everything. Mm-hmm. Then I dove for a ball. It came out again. I'm like, I'm just getting the surgery on this thing. Get it over with. Yeah, might as well. So I did that. And then, yeah, missed football. And then I missed basketball, too. Which Those, in hindsight is. Which, after all, yeah, is probably the best thing to happen to you. The best thing. 
Yeah. You definitely would have still played football and basketball. Totally. Yeah. Why totally. I was getting ready. To, I was getting ready to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that happened. So. Uh, so in those, and like it's, I, it's big for young kids like ages five to ten, twelve, mm-hmm. to play a bunch of sports because like you need just like the overall coordination and just like to yeah. be able to play sports. Do you? Is there like a certain part of football or basketball do you think has helped you a lot in baseball? Um, because like I, I'll speak yeah. like as an example, I'll speak for myself. Like yeah. the positions that I played in football and lacrosse, like playing tight end, being like the footwork I needed to keep up with defensive Probably ends to translated. block them. Like it was literally, like literally identical to what I needed to play defense in lacrosse. Right, and like literally the footwork drills I was doing in lacrosse season were identical to what I needed for football season. So that translates, it, Like, yeah. literally perfectly. And, like, the bench press thing, like, blocking someone and then playing defense, like, in the cross, it's literally just a – it's the same those motion. Those two sports translate a lot. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. And there's, a, there's a, like, a, say, a similar thing why a lot of soccer players are really good at lacrosse because their footwork is just out of this world. Right. And, like, yeah. all you just put a stick in their hand, they're doing the same footwork. They're just dropping dudes left and right. Makes sense, yeah. So what about, like, for you? Well, those – Football and basketball are definitely different sports right. than baseball. Right. But that's why I'm asking though, because yeah. they're all wildly different sports. Yeah. I would I mean, but mentally though. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, basketball, I played I think I played center. Really? At C B C. Well, you've been a big dude ever since. Yeah. But I mean I wasn't like six seven or six eight. Right. How tall are you? Six four, six three. Six three, yeah. yeah. But it's kinda of just playing I played a little out of position. And so, I mean it's the same thing, like Baseball, you're going to kind of be out of position sometimes, playing different positions. So got to adapt. That kind of helped me adapt. Um, hard to come up with similarities, though, in both. That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. Yeah, just because, man. Yeah. I Oh, football, playing wide receiver and then playing outfield, that'd be something. Tracking down the ball. Track. I actually do think that helped me a ton. Making it in an open yeah. space. Yeah, just trying to – got to find a way to get the ball. That and, makes sense. And catch it. Because yeah, once it's up that there, you got to go find it. Yep. I actually think those. Wow, that's a really good one. Really good one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about it's, that. It's damn near the same thing. Probably the same thing with cornerback then, too. Cornerback, yeah. Yeah. Maybe even more, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny you say the dislocating thing. There was one day at football practice where it's just running a route, and I don't I don't know. I think it was junior year. But I just, like, it was, well, it wasn't anything crazy. Just the ball came to me, and it was a little too hard, and I didn't, I just didn't catch it right, and the ball hit me straight on the pinky, and I was like, I dropped it, and I was like, yeah. damn, that hurt. And I looked at my hand, and my pinky was going across my <laughs> oh, knuckles. God. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And I just, like, walked over to Peanut, Coach P, yeah. and, like, the other guys, and I was like, you know, my hand's messed up. And some dude threw up, and I was like, oh, my God. And the trainer came over, and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, like, it hurts, but, like, I'm not in pain. Kind of in shock. And she, yeah, and she was like, just grab it. And I go, okay. And I grabbed it, and it literally just popped right back into place. And, like, everyone was like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I guess that should have hurt, but it really didn't. Like, it actually felt pretty good. Yeah, exactly. I was That's like, how my shoulder felt. When, mm-hmm. I, when it was out of the socket, it felt mm-hmm. like it was the worst pain of my life. But then when it got pushed back in, I was like a huge relief. Like, the pain went away. Oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's I, a... F- I uh, I broke my ankle my junior year of high school and like clean break. Really just slid, snapped slid it? Slid into a base. Oh, God. And, and I like slid in like this. I just caught it. And caught it and I kept going and it bent back. <sighs> and then, did you ever hear about this? No. Okay, so I did that. Oh, my God. I was in Memphis. I did that and then my parents weren't there. And so then Marcos, his mom, Who's on our team? Marcos is on our mm-hmm. team. Marcos, uh, his mom brought me in to the hospital there, and then they were like, "Yeah, you have like a corkscrew fracture in your fibula, I think it was," and uh, and then she gets a call like two hours later. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in the, I'm just sitting in a room, and they're like getting my cast on and stuff uh, or a brace, and they're and she's like talking. And then she hangs up the phone. She's like, Marcos just got hurt, too. No way. I remember him getting hurt. I remember he was on, like, a boot or something. Yep. And then Mar- so then Marcos came in, and his ankle was, like, dislocated, too. What did he do? Same thing. Slid into a base. You're kidding. Yeah. Same game? It, yeah. Either it was the same game or, or we back had a double header. Yeah. Back to back. But 
Oh, that was a terrible my day. Lord. Was this terrible. for a CBC tournament? No, this was in summer baseball. We were on the same team oh. for the Gamers, and like, yeah, that was a bad day. But same thing. Like, I got hurt, and I didn't feel a thing. Mm-hmm. I just heard the pop, felt the pop. And you just saw your ankle and I was just in like, a way that was, it shouldn't be. And it, well, yeah, it wasn't like terrible. I didn't even look at it, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, oh, man, I broke my ankle. And then my coach set me down. They had to call an ambulance because I couldn't get off the field. Jeez. And then, but I didn't really feel a thing till about like 25 minutes later. And then it was just like the shock wore off and wheeling pain. Oh yeah, well they, they had got me on some. I think by <laughs> then, but it was, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, injuries like that. Like that's funny you say that about your pinky. You probably didn't even. You were in such shock. You didn't really even feel. Yeah, it. like I dropped the ball and I was like, damn, that hurt my. Because like, you, you know, you catch a ball and it just. Oh like, yeah, you're like, oh, that kind of stung yeah. a little bit. And then you go back. And you're like, oh man. And like I went to pick up the football and I was like, that's not <laughs> how that should look. That's not straight. No, not at all. That's crooked in like ten different ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit happens. Though. Yep. Seven forty-five. You gotta get out of here. Yeah, I probably got to head out soon. This was a good time, though, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. Obviously, it doesn't mean anything coming from me, but I'm... Thank you, man. Everyone here is just so ecstatic for you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Anytime down the road, we'll uh, do this again. Absolutely. I want to get one of your jerseys. I want to get an Iron Pigs jersey. You got to, man. What number were you? 61. Beautiful. I like the high numbers. Yep, 61. Kind of random, but... No, dude. I love it. All right, man. Get out of here. Good stuff. Yeah. Appreciate you. We went for hour 36. That's pretty good. Yeah. Dude, that was a good time. Flew by. Yeah. You know what would be, be a great idea? You get, like, 